This episode brought to you by Biotrust Ageless Multicollagen. After 20 years old, your body will naturally decrease its collagen production by 12% each passing decade. This is a leading reason as to why skin appears thinner and more wrinkled as we age. It's essential for skin, bones, and more. And the way to keep our skin looking healthy and youthful is by consuming five different types of collagen. Ageless Multi Collagen provides you with the five types of collagen your body needs and one complete protein. As an added bonus, Ageless Multi Collagen is non-GMO and there's zero artificial flavors, colors, preservatives, sweeteners, gluten, or antibiotics. You'll enjoy powerful support for your body with results you can see and feel in a few short weeks. Get Ageless Multi Collagen for 51% off plus free shipping by going to www.healthwithdronetech.com or by clicking the link in the video description box below. Folks, I don't know about you, but I can't take this alternate reality gaslighting anymore. I cannot even believe that this is happening in America right now. Our media, as Americans, we're supposed to be able to trust it for news and information, but it's utterly corrupt and it's waging a war on the sanity of this country. As much as it pains me to sit through this segment, it's important that we address these lies. So let's just get it over with. You know, I, I know there's a lot that come to our viewers in the news and, you know, sometimes crazy things the president says, but, but I want to highlight what you just said about the president inciting domestic terrorism. In 15 days, people, well, many people are already casting their votes, but, but Americans have to decide who, who the next president is going to be. If President Trump is reelected, is the threat of domestic terrorism greater as a result of the president's response, his rhetoric, his refusal to accept your recommendations at DHS. What is this former Obama administration official talking about? What domestic terrorism? Since before the election, it's been left-wingers using violence against Trump supporters. As I like to often remind people because the media just buried the story never to be talked about again, the mayor of San Jose actually encouraged people to attack Trump supporters. And guess what? That's exactly what happened. And not only did he encourage it, but he ordered his police officers to let it happen, which is exactly why the city of San Jose got sued. Isn't that a form of domestic terrorism? It really bugs me that I have to constantly repeat myself because of the media's attempts to erase inconvenient history. But let's remember, it was a Democrat voter that opened up on a Republican baseball game and almost assassinated half of the GOP Senate. What was missing from that event? Oh right, the media asking who incited that violence. And you know why? Because they're the ones who incited it. Just like they, along with Democrats, actually incited Antifa chuds to attack an ICE facility. After they were told that they were concentration camps. CNN actually did several promotional segments of the group that was behind those attacks. And what about all the violence that we've seen from the left over the last five months? How many Trump supporters have been murdered within that time? What about the residential neighborhoods and the restaurant goers that have been attacked by angry mobs who are using force to get them to accept their ideology? Or how about BLM leaders who have been threatening violence if their demands aren't met? For fuck's sake, how many attempts have been made on Trump's life since he took office? Three? These are all pretty clear-cut examples of the left's terror campaign over the last four years. And I'm sure that I'm missing things, but the point is, this is the reality of what's happening in this country. There have been no significant right-wing domestic terror threats. Sure, there are examples like Dylan Roof, but those are few and far between, and they're definitely not reflective of anything Trump has said or done. They all seem to be pointing to Trump mocking and making fun of the Michigan governor, which as we all know is increasingly forbidden in this free country. Sure, sure, you can mock, hate, criticize, and lie about Republicans all you want, but even criticizing a Democrat is tantamount to domestic terrorism. And it needs to be repeated over and over because the media is just ignoring it, but the guys who were arrested in this supposed plot against the Michigan governor were anti-Trump anarchists who are more closely related to Antifa. I, I think so, yes. I, I, think, I think on the other side of the election, it's going to be tense no matter what, no matter who wins. Uh, I think if you have a Biden presidency, then that tension over time uh, can, can tamp down a bit. 
Okay, I got to stop here because she says that when Biden wins, tensions will decrease over time. What does that even mean? And what is she basing that on? Could it possibly be that tensions will decrease over time because the Democrats and their media will call off their Antifa and BLM dogs? Or could it be that the media's reporting will suddenly turn rosy and propagandize in favor of Biden and Democrats while attacking and demonizing anybody who criticizes them? Is she talking about tensions on the right? Because once again, the right isn't out there burning down buildings or gathering in mobs to attack innocent people and for Force them to accept our ideology. That's all happening on the left. I don't know. This almost sounds like a veiled threat that if people don't vote for Joe Biden, then the powers that be will just keep covering for their Marxist communist foot soldiers. A, a President Trump for four more years, uh, he is going to continue to uh, uh, not condemn and add fuel to the fire of white nationalism, of anti-government extremism, QAnon, uh, you name it. He, if, if they are willing to give him support, he's willing to support them. And it's just going to continue to build uh, this tension that we're all sensing in our country. <laughs> I just can't even believe what I'm watching. Here we have a DHS official purposely lying to the American public for the purposes of gaining political power. He is going to continue to... Uh, uh, not condemn and add fuel to the fire of white nationalism, of anti-government extremism. I'm not Would looking to repudiate David Duke. Sure. Uh, David Duke and robocalls are out again, the white supremacist movement supporting you. Uh, do you have any know. words for that? Well, I disavow. David Duke endorsed me? Okay. All right. I disavow. Okay. When we looked at it and looked at the question, I disavowed David Duke. So I've disavowed David Duke all weekend long on Facebook, on Twitter. Are you prepared right now to make a clear and unequivocal statement renouncing the support of all white supremacists? Of course I am. Of course I am. Totally disavow the Ku Klux Klan. I totally disavow David Duke. Ultimately, he got to the Ku Klux Klan, which obviously I'm going to disavow. I reject David Duke, rejected David Duke. Uh, I've rejected the uh, KKK, the Ku Klux Klan. But David Duke is saying to his supporters and followers, vote for Donald Trump. White supremacists are saying, vote. do you want those votes? No, I don't want them, and I don't want him to say it. And you I don't want, want the supporters. No, I don't want anything. I, what do you think of white times? supremacists, by the way? I don't like any group of hate. David Duke announced his Senate candidacy, claiming your agenda. Are you ready before you ask the question? Newt Gingrich said, every Republican should repudiate this guy I no did. matter what it takes. And I do. Rebuked. Is that okay? Rebuked. Rebuked. Done. Done. Do you want white supremacists to vote for you? No, I don't at all. No. Racism is evil. And those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. He is going to continue to... Uh, uh, not condemn and add fuel to the fire of white nationalism. Wrong. As we all know by now, Donald Trump has condemned white nationalists and these groups over and over and over again, going back to before the election. The guys who were arrested in this alleged plot against the Michigan governor, again, were anti-Trump anarchists. QAnon? Who the hell cares about QAnon? Nobody did, until the media decided like two weeks ago that it was going to be the new boogeyman. It's a total red herring. Why would this former DHS official not be way more concerned about the brown shirts that are roaming in the streets every night, destroying, murdering, intimidating innocent people? Or how about the Antifa groups who have launched actual attacks on actual government facilities, groups that were promoted on the very network that you're interviewing on? I'll tell you, it's almost more than the mind can take. And it tells me that something very sinister is going on in our government and in their state media complex. Stay alert, stay safe, and definitely go vote. That's all for this episode. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. If you want to support this channel, you can do so using one of the links in the description or the pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.